Um, there are lots of different things, but real estate offices are very different. Many times people think that they're all pretty much the same, but there are a lot of differences. Um, Keller Williams, in 2012, we overtook, this is sort of a trend. In 2004, we overtook ERA to become the fifth largest real estate organization in the United States in 2006, overtook Prudential in 2009, overtook Remax. 2010, we overtook Century 21, and in 2012, we overtook Coldwell Banker, and we're now the largest real estate organization in the United States by number of agents. Um, during the 2007 to 2011 um, period of time, according to Real Trends, which is co-sponsored by the Wall Street Journal, Keller Williams, the number of sides, and in real estate transactions, there's two sides, went up by 40% the amount of business that we did, whereas the overall market went down 35%. Our productivity per agent at the end of 2012 was 17.8%. That means in the uh, increase in terms of the closed volume, the amount of dollars worth of property sold, whereas the industry had gone up only 9.2%. Our number of units by the end of 2012 were 17%. Uh, almost 18% compared to about 9 with the national average. Um, in other words, we're, we're a big real estate organization and our agents are doing very well compared to other real estate agents. Um, one, some of the, the four areas that we would emphasize as to what sets us apart are education, marketing, technology, culture, and wealth building. By education, you know, I... Um, Gary Keller, when I first read this a while ago, um, I was thinking, he said, we are a training and coaching company that just happens to be in the business of real estate. My thought originally was, well, that's what everybody says they're a training and coaching company. Um, but it wasn't until I got really into Keller Williams that I realized that he actually means this. I was just by, I guess, a disclaimer for 20 how should I say this? For 20 years, I was the vice president of the largest Century 21 group for Silicon Valley. And five years before that, I was the training director for Century 21 for Northern California and Northern Nevada. So that was 25 years. It's obvious I started when I was like 12 or 14, something something in that area. Um, and so and I've seen a lot of training programs for agents. And Keller Williams is all about, not all, but pretty much all about come on, training and coaching. Um, our cornerstone training programs, and by the way, this is not the training to get a real estate license. I'll be talking about that in a few minutes, but this is the training once you've gotten a real estate license. The basic beginning training program for agents is called Ignite, which is designed to bring people up to a level of doing 16 transactions a year. Now, just by way of reference, our average commission is more than $15,000 to an agent. And at 16 a year, you'd have to, I guess, ask yourself if you could live on that. You have to cut back a little, maybe. But um, the, the, we have agents that are actually closing a transaction a week. Our level two training program is called Lead Generation 3612 That means 36 transactions in 12 months. Um, doubling the Ignite gauge of, 12 tra of, of 16 transactions a year with three hours of daily lead generation five days a week. And then our next level of training is called Buyer Mastery and Seller Mastery. Um, timeless Resources. Back in about 2005, Gary Keller wrote a book which became a national bestseller. It's still one of the best-selling real estate books called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent where he interviewed a bunch of, well, millionaire real estate agents. And we used the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Curriculum, in terms of moving people from the beginning point up to what we call the seventh level, where people have their own teams. Um, timely resources include Shift and Shift Commercial, how agents handle shifting real estate markets, because almost all years seem like 
We have shifting real estate markets. And a new book, which just recently made not only the New York Times bestselling list, but the Wall Street Journal bestselling list written by Gary Keller is called The One Thing. And um, and it's all about finding and doing your one thing, as you might might have guessed from the topic. Um, and this book, by the way, is is not a real estate specific book, but is just another um, example of of the kind of material that we're producing. We also have on demand learning for our agents. Um, there's a large number of downloadable courses that are available 24/7 on our intranet. So. Let me just put it simply, getting a real estate license is like getting a fishing license in that the license doesn't catch fish, right? You can have a fishing license and catch no fish. Um, I've actually had people, you know, if, if you weren't catching enough fish, would you say, I need a better license? That's, that's, that's the problem, right? You don't have the right bait. You don't know where and when and how. So real estate's the same way. Getting a real estate license doesn't catch fish either. It's how much you know about where to go and what to do. Now, just to be, um, just to say it plainly, according to the National Association of Realtors, 80% of all people who get started in real estate leave the business in 12 months. How would they know? Because it's like a union or a trade association and you join and pay dues and they can track the people that join, how many of them are still there paying dues in 12 months and the answer is 20%. 80% of all people who started, and I don't think, by the way, that this is early retirement, right? You understand? I don't think that they just made so much money in the first year they didn't have to work anymore. They didn't make enough money to continue paying their dues to be in the real estate board. At Keller Williams, our figure is 75% of all the new agents that begin with us are still in the business a year later, right? 80% are gone on a national system, but 75% are at our offices, and the reason is training, right, and coaching, which I'm going to talk about. I've, there's an old saying in real estate, what are the three most important factors in determining the value of real estate? And it's location, location, and location. And the three most important things in determining the value of a real estate office are training and training and training right now training is good you go to a class and there, it's interactive and you learn stuff but once you get out of training we have coaching if you have a coach you're four and a half times as likely to reach your goals tiger woods everybody who's good has a coach the operating principle of our comp of our group of our keller williams group has a coach our team leader has a coach i'm the productivity coach for the two market centers and i have a coach right we all have coaches and so will you and our coaching involves there's one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching and we have a variety of different levels the beginning is what we call launch coaching so that means once you get your license until you've done your first three transactions it's a more intensive coaching program then there's on what's called track to cap coaching and capping is where our agents reach a level where they're at a hundred percent commission and one of the distinguishing things about Keller Williams is is that most agents begin on a 70-30 commission split and when the office has earned uh, $30,000 in our market centers in terms of company dollars you get a hundred percent after that during the year you can reach a hundred percent commission and so our coaching system is designed to launch you and to get you to where you've capped that's what we call it which means you're now earning a hundred percent we want everyone to reach that level and of course our agents like that too um, so training and coaching is one of the most important things if you're going to pick an office. Number two is technology. Um, we're in California. We're in Silicon Valley. We will be judged by the quality of our stuff, right? Do you understand? I mean, what does your website look like? 
Um, by the way, in our training program, you're going to need to have more than one website, right? Because there's the more nets you have, the more fish you catch. I, I'm stuck on the fishing analogy, I guess. And so technology is an important part. And we have what's called eAgency, which is a type of website that's good at converting i mean excuse me e edge which is a type of website that's good at at converting people into leads um e agency is a far more customizable site and we have the system that integrates them so that you can do drip email marketing and campaigns and things like that uh international reach and local feel all of our 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 website materials are um Enabled for smartphones and tablet PCs, we actually have an app that clients can use, and it's base, it uses GPS. So it would have, for example, your app, if you were a Keller Williams agent, would have your contact information and name on it. Century 21 has an app, too. Right? They have an app, too, which has all the listings in the MLS. But if you saw one you liked and you said, I wanted to see it, it doesn't go to you, the agent who gave the person the app. It goes to Century 21. Right, and then they give it to whoever they want to. Coldwell Banker is the same way. Intero, Alan, they're all the same way. Our apps are customized for the agents so that you would let people download the app from your site or you could send them a link in an email or have a QR code on something where they could have it delivered to them. And your app is custom to you. If they click, I'd like to see this property, I want more information, it generates an email to you, not to us. Um, and it's, well, all that's really cool. Um, we also have something called our the KWLS, which is the Keller Williams Listing System. One of the fundamental differences in philosophy between Keller Williams, and this, by the way, is true for Century 21, Coldwell Banker, ERA, Better Homes and Gardens, Alon Pinnell, and Intero, all of them act the same in this regard and what this means is is let's say you were to list a house the for sale sign that goes up in the front yard has to have the office phone number on it the reason they do that is because when it goes up people call the number on the sign which is not your number it's the office phone number now the office has a lead which they can do with as they choose um, if they take it and they do take it and syndicate it and syndicate means they go to Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com and Yahoo and all these other websites but again like Century 21 and the company that owns Century 21 by the way owns Coldwell Banker, ERA, Sotheby's and Better Homes and Gardens they're all owned by they're all the same they're all the same and it goes to New Jersey so if they put a, a, a listing on Zillow what happens is is the phone number for people to call is an 800 number not your number if it's your listing if somebody says i want to see it the lead doesn't go to you if it's your listing it goes to parsippany new jersey to their server and it goes back to the office and the office gives it to whoever they want to typically the office gives the leads to the top 20 percent of the agents the ones who've been there the longest and are doing the most business that means your listing doesn't necessarily produce leads for you it produces leads for them in this diagram this picture shows what this would be what a listing of ours would look like on Zillow but whenever anyone clicks on I want more information I'd like to what they see is a landing page which has the agents picture phone number email website um, not ours one of the numbers you know I went through a bunch of numbers that Keller Williams has one of the numbers that we're very proud of is the number zero and that's the amount of money we spend promoting us Right? Do you understand? As opposed to our agents, uh, Century Twenty One runs ads in the Super Bowl promoting them. Right? Call us. We don't do that. Right? We want them to call you. As Gary Keller says, we stand behind our agents, not in front of them. These are some examples of some of the websites. One of them on the top right is an e-agency site, very customizable. E-Edge, the one on the bottom left, is much more um, business. It's focused. It isn't as customizable. We call it a set it and forget it. All of the leads, if anybody sets up a search or wants information, they all go into the back end of the program, into my leads, they become contacts. There's email marketing campaigns, drip marketing, and all the way through my transactions, it's an integrated loop that people go through.
So in marketing, we stand in front of our behind our agents, not in front of them. I already said that. Um, a lot, wide variety of 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 email and print marketing materials, presentation materials, turnkey systems for marketing properties. Our eEdge system, which we launched a few years ago in the first year, agents created 28,000 campaigns, which are automated, customizable marketing campaigns to 2 million, 2.5 million consumers. And the business of our agents that use that system went up 67%. Um, as of January 2013, we've had, which is about the second year, it went up to 70,000 campaigns and over five and a half, almost five and a half million. Um, we have commercial marketing, luxury homes, and the final, well, one of the final things is, that guy looks really happy, doesn't he? It says, wealth building, the power of passive income. Every month, 42%, it's about 50-50, uh, 48 and 52% of all of our company profits per office are distributed to sales associates in profit sharing. Half of the company's profits, roughly, every month are given to the agents in profit sharing. The Century 21 group, I worked at the broker who was the owner, who was the emperor, lived in the gated community in San Martin with the lake, vineyards, and um, uh, mansion. And, of course, it was his company, so he got all the profits. Isn't that right? But the problem is is that really the only asset any real estate company has are people. If all the salespeople leave, all you have are liabilities now, right? You have debts. And so one of the things that Keller, we like to say that our agents are partners. And what we mean by partners is we split half of the money with them, right? Which is um, sort of sounds partner-like. And last year, uh, the end of 2012, we distributed just in that year $55.3 million to our sales associates, which was a 44% increase. You can see this is one of the reasons why we've been growing when other real estate organizations have been slowing because um, – and just so you understand, after three years at Keller Williams, you vest in the profit sharing program, which means you continue to receive profit sharing, whether you're here or not. You can name a beneficiary. We have agents who retire after a certain period of time because their, their profit sharing continues to come. Um, very few companies in, in general, let alone real estate companies, share 48 percent of their profits with the people that work for them um culture one of the we have one um one of the interesting things about keller williams i said that our associates are partners we not only mean they're partners in the sense that we give them about half of the money the profits but they also participate in all the decision making of the office the something called an associate leadership council which is like a board of directors the owners can't just spend money however they want to they couldn't move the office because they wanted to because any of those changes affect profit sharing right it affects profits and all of those decisions have to be approved by the associate leadership council um our books are open by the way, the meetings with the owners and the associate leadership council are open to all agents. Anybody can sit in and listen to what's going on. Our books every month are open. Any of our agents can get a copy of our profit and loss statement for the previous month. Um, this, there are no secrets. This, by the way, is also a little unusual for many companies. Um, to, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's well, Thursday is what we call Red Day, which is a day of community service that we do nationwide. And there's, in, I know that there's some local news organizations that are going to be covering it. Um, also, one final thing, we were voted is to be one of the top 150 workplaces. This is from Workplace Dynamics. Uh, Keller Williams, by the way, this was not a real estate list. This was a top 150 places to work in the United States. We were ranked ninth from the top, and we were the only real estate organization. Did you get? Did you get the outside? There's yeah. 